Yeah, I just want to say something about the finances. I mean, it, um, because of the media censure we've had over the last five years, it, it, um, it has had an impact on our, us trying to raise money to try and survive. You know, it's because of the media censure that we have been unable to get the story out for, for people to hear about what happened and then to contribute money to help us, you see. So, you know, we, we are at a point now where we're on the brink of winning the Diaz case, but, you know, financially we're thinking very fast. We are. happened to me. Um, I, I, I came to the G8 summit uh, working as an indie media journalist. Um, I'm an environmental journalist. Um, you know, from London, uh, with some of my friends and a few other protesters. Um, I, I arrived in Genoa about a week, about ten days before the raid. Um, we, we moved down to uh, uh, Diaz Pascoli, um, set up in the media on the third floor, um, and across the street in Diaz Pertini, uh, there were many people sleeping there. It was just a kind of a, a sleeping dormitory. Um, it it was, had uh, um, pacifists, environmentalists, socialists, uh, journalists, um, no one dangerous or threatening that was there. And you know, we've later discovered you know, the police knew this. Um, anyway, about um, 10 to midnight, on the 21st of July, um, I uh, heard that there was an Italian came running into the school um, and said that there was a raid underway and so I decided to try and cross the road uh, back to Diaz Pascoli. Um, as soon as I got out of the gate um, I was confronted with 300 police coming down the street. Um, all in full riot gear and extremely angry. Um, I uh, was um, hit over the shoulder blade and was stunned uh, standing there um, and then um, ten policemen um, surrounded me. Um, I was uh, kneecapped, put on the floor in the first attack um, then um, a policeman came, uh, came back a few minutes later um, and uh, kicked me in the spine. Um, because I am a, a light person, um, he um, hooked me up on his foot and I was kicked out into the street. Um, and this policeman was laughing. Um, and they uh, proceeded to have a game of football with me. Um, eight of my ribs on this side were broken, smashed. Um, my lung was punctured many times. Um, I suffered um, massive internal bleeding. Um, my hand was broken in this attack. Um, then it stopped for um, a minute or so. And then, um, and you will see in the video footage, um, the third attack on me, uh, where I was uh, kicked in the teeth. I lost uh, all of my teeth at the top, ten teeth, uh, and I was batoned on the head. Um, I was then um, left unconscious in a coma on the street uh, for about 15-20 minutes without medical aid. Um, I, uh, I was one of the first to arrive at San Martino Hospital um, and I was immediately put into intensive care. Uh, the doctors did not think I was going to survive. Um, I woke up at uh, 2 o'clock the next day, Sunday afternoon. Um, I uh, re very quickly realised I was under arrest and I was being accused of being a terrorist when I'm actually a journalist. Um, I was held under arrest for three days. Uh, there were um, many attempts by 
the same policeman who tried to kill me to take me to Bolzaneto. Uh, if I had been transferred to Bolzaneto, I would have died there. In fact, we have uh, five doctors on trial for the abuse that happened at Bolzaneto. Um, I was uh, finally released on uh, late on Wednesday night. I was transferred back up to the tenth floor of San Martino. Um, then Thursday morning, um, the world media came, and for the first time, I, ma I managed to, to tell the world what had happened. Uh, at this stage, there were only six of us left in, the, in Italy that could tell the prosecutors and the Italian people what had happened because Berlusconi had signed a deportation order. Um, I went back, I flew back to London on the 4th of August. Um, it took me um, many weeks and months to recover from my injuries. Um, it took me a long time to stand upright again. Um, I still ha have to have operations uh, on my spine uh, and on my hand. Um, I uh, delayed these operations because of the um, trial. Um, I returned back here one year later and I met Heidi Giuliani for the first time. Um, she had heard about my story and she said that she was adopting me as her son to replace Carlo. She also said that if we could get justice at Diaz, it would be justice for Carlo. And so this is one of the things that drives me to bring this case. It took um, about a year, 14 months, for the facts to become, um, uh, to come out, you know, by the prosecutor's office. Um, discovering the police had planted a Molotov cocktails at the school. Um, there was another policeman that uh, um, had stabbed himself, this sort of thing. Um, but what I'm trying to say is that it's been a very long fight from being accused as a terrorist to putting 76 policemen on trial for human rights abuses. Um, I, I, I am just a normal, simple human being like yourselves and probably like Mr. Grillo's viewers. Okay, I'm just a journalist. I'm, I'm not dangerous at all whatsoever. Um, but I, I was accused of all of these things for a year or so. Um, if the police had managed to transfer me to Bolzaneto, I would have gone to Pavia prison for 15 years based on false charges. Um, about a year after the raid, it became apparent um, what kind of men were on this raid. Um, there was the anti-terrorist squad, there were uh, two units of special um, riot cops that had training in America, um, some crime divisions, um, DGOS, um, However, when I felt I was being, you know, when I was being attacked, um, they were definitely trying to kill me. Um, one of the policemen said in English, uh, you know journalist, you black block, we are going to kill black block. Um, so I, I knew then, uh, it, uh, you know, it was going to be very hard to survive this, if ever. Um, Late, much later on it became apparent that I was not the only case of uh, attempted killing at Scuola Diaz. Um, I think there are uh, about seven recorded, yeah, about seven recorded um, cases of, um, you know, attempted murder described by the prosecutors. Um, and they are, you know, Melanie Jean Nash, a uh, German protester on the first floor of Scuola Diaz. Um, she has never recovered from the raid. Um, Thomas Albright, 
he had his split head split from here to here he was in a coma for four days uh, Lena Zuka another German protester she had um, internal injuries and fractured skull um, martyrs and kneels and there are many more cases like this um, what we um, faced at Scuola Diaz was pure fascism um, in my country with English policemen we don't expect to deal with their politics their personal politics as policemen they are just supposed to do their job at Scuola Diaz there was all the fascist politics mixed in with their job right and this is what we experienced at Scuola Diaz you, you know we, when I was at San Martino hospital um, I mean all told about yeah 63 of us were taken there um, by when, uh, Wednesday morning there were only you know I think about six of us left I mean by Tuesday um, after the, the hospital had, had checked the law they realised the police must have had warrants and stuff like this to, to take us out of the hospital um, and they didn't have and so we had doctors blocking the police inside the hospital to prevent Diaz victims from being dragged out um, I mean on, on Sunday night even some of the same attackers from Diaz came up to San Martino grabbed the people they had been beating at 4am in the morning and they still had broken arms, legs and everything untreated taken to Bolzanetto given no food or water lined up against the wall beaten randomly on many occasions okay right the women were threatened with rape okay I mean do I need to paint you a picture here of, of how bad Bolzanetto was I mean we've already had like um, indications from the court that uh, what happened at Diaz was random and spontaneous but at, at Bolzanetto it was systematic torture I mean not, not of the kinds that happens at Guantanamo Bay but it's still torture, it's psychological, it's mental, it's physical you know kangaroo courts you know if you have to walk between a line of like um, you know 30 um, you know these um, you know carabinieri, special carabinieri that gra drafted in into Bolzanetto you are kicked to death almost L you know people I mean people walked out with you know tons more injuries out of Bolzanetto than out of Diaz we can't even just sometimes distinguish you know you, you know from where you you know you got injuries at Diaz and at Bolzanetto which is important for the case you know we need to differentiate